Okay, double click on the CS51 Plus, and you're going to open your file from your SD card. Mine is test.icf, open, and this is the file that you saved on your handheld. And so it should have all your configuration that of the settings and frequencies that's in your handheld at the moment. And here's all your your memories, your banks, about 100 channels of bank. And you can see I've got some repeaters in the basically just the first bank. And you go down and the digital that's where all your D-Star related stuff is. Not sure what that particular field is. I may have to set that up on my radio. I haven't done it yet. So you go to my let's see, my station. That should have my call sign, D star, and the little ID fifty one after it, which is just telling what radio I'm using, and the little message and all that information displays when you're using D star in your uh, little status window. And here's your transmitted call record. Uh, it gives you a listing of uh, the, those are people you call. I think using the uh, call sign routing, which is not I'm not using. <laughs> it's not a it's not a real good way to uh, get a hold of somebody. It's it's kind of frowned upon in the D Star community. Linking is really what uh, what we use. Uh, there's a recorded, uh, receive call, record. So that shows everybody that my radio is received. And as you can see, if they've got uh, APRS information, it'll give you their latitude and longitude, longitude, so you'll know where they are. Some people put that if they have the settings turned on. And some people don't, but kind of nice to see because you can tell how far somebody is from you when you're talking to them at at an instant. So that's kind of a handy feature to look back on all the all the call signs and all the people you've talked to or heard. And here's all your settings associated with uh, DV, you know, the D-Star settings. I don't think I've changed too many of those so you can play with those uh, if you need to and you got the GPS settings these are just uh, locations and there's some default ones in there that came from ICOM I haven't saved any as of this point and you got your GPS settings now there are some stuff you might want to change in here if you want to send beacon out your APRS data when you uh, key up, you want to set your internal. You want to set it to internal GPS because you're using the GPS in the radio itself and not an external uh, GPS device. You want to set it to the DPRS DV A. That seems to work for me. And that's the setting I'm using. Uh, the unproto address that should be in there already. You shouldn't have to touch that. Uh, then you might want to select your symbol. I selected number one, which is, I believe, the little person carrying a little HT. So it gives you some other ones to choose from. As well as your SSID, which is the dash nine, which is what I'm using for my HT. And all that will show up if you go to the APRS.FI webpage uh, when you transmit. Uh, you'll show up on the map, which is kind of cool. So there you can see the uh, message, the GPS message also that I had set. And these are just your common settings. So you'll be able to set your uh, common settings in your GPS and change them. Um, you know, I've changed a few of them, but uh, at least you know you can go in and change them and load them in your radio where you don't have to fumble around in the in the menus if this is an easier way for you to change the settings that it, it might be a good way to do it 
and you can always default back to your uh, to your original file so if you change a bunch of stuff and decide ah I goofed up you just go back to the SD card in your HT and load that original file and that should bring you back to where you started so sometimes it can be trial and error trying to figure out what the settings actually do for you so anyway okay there's he's a these are the banks. Uh, I've got three banks set up. One for 2 meter FM, one for 70 centimeter FM, and then D star. So you can uh, you can include you know the various types of repeaters, you know the various bands. You can uh, group them together with the different bank channel settings. can see I've got a bunch of them in there. Okay. What else am I going to show you? I'm recording this after the fact, so I'm kind of looking through. These are all the your D star repeater list that's what comes in the radio now I have gone and changed under simplex and I, I entered my DV mega Raspberry Pi that's my access point that's the f the frequency that I'm using simplex frequency so that's the actual memory that I'm using when I'm accessing my uh, my DV mega hotspot here at the house so you You'll need to set something like that up if you have a hot spot to do that. I'm kind of closing these all up here. When you're all done, you need to save your file. You go up there to the Save button. Save As. Under File. And you want to name it something different. That way you don't overwrite your previous file. It was kind of your your starting point. So you want to name it something else. I think I named it modified and save it. And now you'll have uh, two files on your SD card. So you'll have your original one if you need to jump back to the old settings. And you can once you put the SD card back in your radio, you can load the modified.icf file, and your new settings should take effect. I'm showing you some. Uh, your clone menu which is what you'd use once you get your interface and your COM port setting you have to set that for the COM port that your interface cable is uh, connected to to get that to work and then there's some other settings up here in the menu you might uh, you know some defaults that you might want to change I haven't changed any of them I left it as it is but Hopefully this will help you get started using this software. Thanks for watching.